Uh, as I said it during the first session, uh, or during my first session on uh, the first day, when I had the, the, the workshop about uh, configuration file optimization, uh, my last and the last uh, session of the, this edition of Kamali Award would be about the scripting languages. Uh, we already discussed a bit about the plans we revealed last year on uh, having this uh, embedded interface uh, framework for allowing using different scripting languages. That actually happened. Uh, again, it's still a lot of work to export uh, functions to it, but uh, uh, the, the, the foundation is there and it's usable and uh, uh, expect uh, more from it. So as a background information, why we started all this uh, like one year, one year and a half ago, uh, so we had this evolution from like kind of static uh, uh, routing then uh, you know, having a dynamic config file, so initial CIP express router config file was just some function with the static parameters. Then the next in the evolution was like, you know, adding a dy uh, dynamic content with all these variables, so everyone wanted variables everywhere, so uh, they could uh, decide based on that uh, content, not just do regular expression routing. Then a lot of work with other scalability and you know API oriented, and now it's practically more and more like integration required with WebRTC uh, application and so on. And we have our scripting languages was fine to deal with. Okay, initial needs got the call, send it there or there. Then we had these variables, and we could integrate with APIs on various reasons as with you know HTTP requests and so on. But then the demand it's even more there new application every day out there and people want to use it and um, they want more flexibility in the writing configuration file. And I saw that it's not the best interest for the project and many developers spend time on extending the scripting language. Reinventing another one, maybe slightly optimized for uh, SIP routing, but then the CPU power, the capacity with all this elasticity from the cloud and so on is no longer on like, I need to optimize it. I remember the focus time when we were running on really huge fridges, Sun, whatever, Unix boxes, and they were probably like 100 times less powerful than my Ubuntu phone that I had today, the dangerous demo. So trying to squeeze now on every CPU cycle is not really the uh, main goal for us. And reinventing a scripting language, it's again a waste of resources from my point of view. And another big pressure from time to time, although it's starting, it's fast. Even the, the TCP TLS connection could be broken by the mid router, so the device should reconnect. So it's not really like a big pressure, of course, would we'll have some uh, delay there, but some of them are not really implementing it properly. As Jan said, some they reconnect after half an hour and you try to solve that. So this hot reloading of the uh, routing rules, because if you change an IP address, if you change the server, you will have to shut down in a way or another. But if you want to add a log message, if you want to change the parameter to the dispatcher, I don't want route robbing, I want to do call routing based on uh, load and so on, that uh, would be nice to, to have without uh, uh, restarting. So that was the, the, the reason we started this discussion and we ended up, my chosen name, Kamailo Embedded Interpreter Interface, short name, uh, Kemi. It was added in uh, Kamailo and the first version had uh, like the default config file without present services working on, with this uh, interpreter and practically what this allows, it's like a single framework for exporting a function, implementing the C, and become available in any of these scripting languages. We did have the Lua interpreter, Hugh here, worked a lot on that module in the past. Uh, we had Python, I think Maxim contributed, if I'm not wrong, Perl, I don't even remember who contributes, but because of Fred, we keep it here, so 
Then I did some mono, then someone contributed Java. So there were a lot of uh, options, but it was like inline execution. You had our Camilla configuration file, and then there was a function that you had to use there and say execute this script, and you give the path to the external script more or less that way, or an option to load it at startup. Uh, so we had this. Most of them prior this uh, came interface. I did edit two of them, like JavaScript and Squirrel. Uh, I haven't upgraded some of the old interpreters. We had the inline interpreters, I, as I call them, Perl, Mono, and Java. I'm not yet sure because I never really look uh, much at that module. Um, and the native language is still available there. It's like, you know, if you build a load balancer, probably will never want to, to go to that, but if you want to integrate with the next hype tomorrow, no SQL to die the day after tomorrow server, or whatever social networking will be available for the next three days, but everyone is buzzing uh, in the morning, then probably Python has something for it, or you can code it easier there. Um, so there is a link where you can read a bit more. The state of uh, the art at this moment. There are more than 60 modules exporting most of their functions to Kemi. TM module is not completed because I think has like 60 function. I was even thinking most of them are exported, the important one, but I was thinking removing them because they are kind of redundant. When we merge with CPEX router, we got two versions of functions to please the people from Kamail and SCR guys, but probably we can simplify a bit there. It's why I haven't thought. But there are also many other modules that they don't export anything to Camailio config file. Like the database modules probably are like 12, 15, and many of other helper modules. And probably now we, we are like, my estimation, like three um, quarters of uh, what we need to export. We'll like to have this templating, which I spoke on the uh, first day of the conference in the morning to make it a bit uh, more easier. Why we'll have to do kind of manual work now, it's because, and I'll show it in the next slides, we need to split a bit of C code. It's not like new development, it's like just breaking existing functions into like two of them. And you'll see it when we have that with the new modules probably will be just using kind of templating the interface to generate these exports. Uh, to have in mind, we export this KSR object, or sometimes it's a table, but you can access it like an object with KSR.module in function. And uh, there are some things that we need to do it per interpreter to kind of keep the same experience as you have with the default Camilla config file, and that's mainly exit and drop. Because for example, if you call exit in Lua, that means kill the interpreter, and actually the interpreter is Camilla because it's linking the interpreter, and you kill Camilla, probably you don't want, but you still want to have like an exit of the execution of the Lua script. So exiting execution of the Lua script, but not exiting Camilla as an interpreter. So I actually found some uh, workarounds, even in Lua and others. Uh, in some of them it's easier because they have, you can throw like an exception in Python and you catch it inside Camilo being the interpreter and you know uh, this is actually an uh, exit trigger by the script, not something from another function. There is of course the generic execution of any other function available from Camailio module, so a wrapper, so you can call like tRelay with mod f or by using KSR tm relay. This is given as a generic, so until we do like native exports, you can use the one that is just a wrapper, you give the function name and the parameters. Uh, there is a bit of a conflict with PV module because PVs are also exported by core and the decision was to use PV extensions, but then pretty much everything is like well, KSR, module name, and the functions. We still need to do some decision because many functions have the name of the module already as prefix underscore and something. We have to decide if we keep that to have like 
one one relation or we remove it when it's we have the module name before it just a couple of uh, Example here, so authentication is there, TM, TM extensions, not traversal, it's there, JSON, uh, again, many other don't need this uh, exports. You can use it now with MySQL, with Postgres, these are not available in the configuration file. SQL Ops is there if you want. Then many other modules are a bit like do, shall we do it or not? Because like an HTTP client, you get it in Python probably in one line, right? So do you want to use the implementation from Kamailia module or you want, you can use directly the one from the Python? So some of these modules don't really need like being, probably will do it, but you have in that language some uh, alternative and sometimes more flexible or better said, Definitely more flexible with some of these uh, uh, interpreters. So now, one by one, the ones that I already upgraded, and I hope others will uh, jump at least for the uh, what they use. So up Lua, actually, I like Lua when and I use it extensively on this old way of running uh, running inline. Uh, Lua script, so executing it from the Kamailo config file. Um, it actually had also this kind of reload, so those snippets, you, you say execute this snippet, you could reload it by uh, sending an RTP, uh, uh, RPC command. Among his highlights, it's still a very small interpreter, it's fast, it's quite uh, popular in, in VoIP world. Uh, Free switch guys, Asterix, they already have support for it. Uh, it's used in gaming space where it's also a lot of traffic and they, they really care on this uh, latency, so uh, it's a good candidate. There is a bit of a mixture because different operating system have different Lua interpreter versions. They change a bit how you should export to Lua, so we have a bit of uh, uh, tricky ways to detect uh, what you can uh, uh, do uh, or how we detect which Lua version should be used for uh, linking against it as interpreter. This is an example of a Kamailio route block, namely route zip out. I just gave it here as an example because it's uh, smaller and fits the slide. So practically, this will be a route block in the native config file, and I will show it. We have now KSR object is myself, and then you can get the value of a variable. Then return and, and the exit, this extension that we implemented. Then you can execute any other function you define in Lua. So this is a function, you choose the name, and then you can have, this is the route relay in the default config file, so it's just a wrapper around the relay. Adding a header, again, KSR, HDR, append, header field, and that's it. The next interpreter would be JavaScript, which I added uh, at the beginning of the year because Lua requires to install an external application libraries and so on. And I found this uh, uh, project, DuckTape.org, and if I'm not wrong, I saw it with, from a tweet from Saul or something like that, if Saul is still here. And what's good with this one, because don't assimilate it as being the full JavaScript you can use in a browser because that has access to object from the HTML. It's mainly the ECMAScript where you have the language, how you define function, and the core library like string, mathematic operations. It's rather small, and they did it in a smart way that you have only three files that you copy over in your folder, and there is no other external library. So practically, you compile this with the default Kamailio, no apt install for external interpreter and so on, and you get the flexibility of using the JavaScript style, and of course, reloading. So no external dependency, you write the routing blocks in this Java or ECMAScript, again, it's maybe better said like that. It looks quite similar to the previous one, it's a different syntax because, yeah, in uh, Lua you have uh, function to the end, in JavaScript you have curly braces, 
But otherwise, it looks quite similar. KSR is myself because it's from the core, appending the header, exiting. So it's pretty much the same. Benefits, as I said, no uh, external interpreter that needs to be installed. Python, I did it because it was available there, but I'm not much into Python myself. Uh, uh, again, adding support for KME framework is not really a lot of coding. Uh, it's just uh, implementing some wrapper function and some, uh, let's say, generator that I will show you later for uh, performances. Anyhow, it should be in pair. I haven't really tested that much. It's more object-oriented. I haven't looked at reloading the routing script yet because I haven't really tested that much. With Lua, I was by default with uh, JavaScript I uh, implemented. This one probably is going to come soon as uh, a reload option. And the last I added was like, I found it also by searching what scripting languages are there because I was thinking maybe Lua, JavaScript are considered to be quite complex languages by the grammar definition. So with JavaScript, you can have all this closure and so on. So people might think that the interpreter itself needs to parse all these kind of uh, variants that are possible there and could be rather complex. And this is not that used and also was more like having something that is simple and people can look at it if they want to implement it for another module. I did it in the same way like importing the source code, although this one you can uh, install it as a library, but I wanted not to have an external dependency because it's not packaging all the uh, um, uh, operating systems there. I still have some troubles to get it stable. When I export a lot of function, apparently I get some crashes. But why this attracted my attention, it has a compilation option. So you compile. This is a, like a really basic uh, scripting languages, but with a proper grammar, with a couple of good uh, core libraries for string mathematics and so on. And because of that pre-compilation, you kind of get to this a sort of fix up we have now. So you can say you can initiate like a regex uh, object and we'll parse it at startup and then you use the matching only with that one. So it looked interesting, but again, I tried to do it uh, like two weeks ago and because of the event, I haven't really had time to investigate what's wrong with that one. So again, looks quite similar. Probably this is more or less like the JavaScript one. The difference would be this is really small language as definition of the language and capabilities comparing with the, 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 the grammar you can have in uh, JavaScript. And also the memory manager here would be reference counting as opposite of a garbage collector with some of the others. And the same route in Kamaili as we have it now would be this one. So practically, it's not that complex to move from one to another. Remember, global parameters will stay in a Kamaili default configuration file. Only the dynamic routing rules will, uh, uh, can be implemented in these scripting languages, and you can reload that. But the loading modules, setting the parameters, setting core parameters are still um, with the default uh, or with the native uh, configuration interpreter. Now, I, I don't know how many developers are around, but I want to show the differences or what's required to get from one to another. So this is actually how we export now function to the native configuration file. There is a structure where we give the name of the, the function, we give the pointer to the C, so it has credential with W like wrapper, it's kind of common notation. This is, has a parameter one, and it's expected to be, as we have so-called fix up, SPV is like static string or uh, pseudo variable expression. So this function, you can give it with a static string value or you can use some variable as its first parameter. And this is actually exported by the, the, the module interface as one of its fields. 
what's that wrapper itself? So this is from the, the module itself, from the auth module. This is the implementation of the function that we provided as pointer to the exports structure, which is evaluating the parameter. So this. If it's a string, just returns the string. If it's variables, evaluates the variables. And the string value of those variables will be stored in this realm, S realm, string realm. And then we call another function, ki has credentials, and we'll have to use now the static string because in C code, you have to provide to the, 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 the real value no matter you use like request your and it was Daniel at something. In the C code, you want to have that Daniel at something. How we export now to, to Kemi, we have another structure where we give like the object, the, the submodule, authentication, we give the name, same, has credentials, so it will be uh, like uh, ksr out, dot out, dot has credentials. It's returning an integer in the default Camilo config file. That's by default, but I wanted to let it as open. Now we have only integer returns, but could, uh, could be extended. This is the pointer to the C function to be executed. And instead of just saying the number of parameters, because in the default config file, everything expected to be a string parameter, here we have to say the type of the parameter, up to six parameters string, and can be int. Or if you don't have parameters, you can put it none. So actually, this is the function which is executed by the config file wrapper from the native language after evaluating. Because from the scripting language, from Lua, from Python, we get already a string value. So practically, this is it, the implementation of this function, it's here, so it's actually used by the config file function as well by the chemi export structure. So the chemi is executing directly this one, the wrapper is doing the fix up evaluation. Now there are some people concerned on uh, performances. All of these uh, languages are actually doing a pre-compilation and probably we are not way better in designing and implementing interpreting uh, interpreters, because our role is developing uh, SIP-related, VoIP-related uh, extensions. But anyhow, the main concern was like, you know, it's kind of many hopes to look up, because we have the core, doesn't export that much. There are many modules that actually export function. And now the interpreter is another module. So practically, a module needs to see the other modules at some point when they are exporting. And if you just search always, OK, it's KSR, then it's auth. What's the, the auth module? And then searching the list of the auth module, that's not working. In C, we can't really generate dynamic wrappers. So my solution is, OK, I did an estimation that can be changed, but has to be changed before compilation. I estimated that, OK, we have more than 1,024 function in all, all our modules, but nobody is loading all the modules. So it's very rare that by loading the modules you need, you'll exceed this number of functions exported by the, the module. And each module is actually generating like 1,024 static functions which call another function with an index. And then in the core, we have a table, a static table of the same size, which point to this static generated function that it's, again, generated and implemented in each module because each module has a different signature to export to Python, to Lua. And we associate that with what we have in our modules and our modules export. So practically, it's more like Pointer execution with an index, instead of searching all every time by name. So we export native to the Lua, to Python, to uh, whatever interpreter. A pointer that executes another function, so a pointer to a function that executes another function due to an index, and that's blazing fast. Uh, as a matter of fact, you'll see some um, 
results uh, later. So this is what I have the example with Lua. As I said, I kind of use it more. So inside the Lua module now, it's a file that has like 1,024 function with this kind of signature. And then it's a table defined. So initially, it's with null pointer. This is when a module is loaded. It's exporting to uh, Kemi. And then the, the, the Kemi framework will put the pointer here. We'll set it here. So when the Lua script is executing practically this, we'll execute this one with the index whatever. And behind that is the pointer to the module function. So this is the, the other uh, wrapper function to find the uh, uh, function to be executed. So by getting the index, we get the function. This is, would be a function, and we execute it because this is the structure uh, exposed by the module. So again, it's just an uh, indirection layer with an index. is not lookup of name at the runtime at all. And when I test it, and I'm pretty much done, it's a bit older test uh, results, but practical Lua and native, they are really not having uh, any big difference on uh, uh, performances. So the minimum execution and uh, maximum, but the average, it's a matter of, so this is in microseconds. And I was uh, doing it on a virtual machine. Python was slightly slower because we initiate there like an object that was uh, the initial developer. Although we can just uh, export it as a static object, I haven't decided because again, or I was working on the previous module as I'm not that familiar with uh, Python. I didn't get the chance to test uh, the SQL and the JavaScript, but I expect to be on the same range. So we'll, we still do sort of a workaround. You don't have to do it as a module developer. This is specific to the interpreter, up, Lua, up, Python. It was done. I just wanted to show you the solution so you are not afraid of this is a dynamic language. I have to look up the function by name and then execute, find the pointer to the function and execute it. We export directly the pointer with a level of uh, index uh, access into a static array. And it was looking quite good. So by that, you get now reloading of the uh, scripting languages and your choice of scripting languages. Couple of choices right now, hopefully more in the future. And uh, exporting, it's really simple. Actually, I, I do many when I get a bit of time or actually when I want to relax because coding sometimes is just relaxing comparing with other activities. It's just splitting the function because Many of the functions have this fixed up evaluation and then the logic with the string values just in the same function. It's like, get the top of that function, put it below. Once you get the string value of the parameter, execute what was left on top, which is a new function. And you export again. Script interpretation does fix up evaluation, which it needs to do. The fix up evaluation in our case with Kemi would be the scripting languages Lua Python. And with that, I uh, done. And before taking the questions and knowing that people will start packing, discussing once again, many thanks to all of you in first place. Because without you, there will be no reason for even sponsors to support us. But there will be also no reason for us as developers to continue. Uh, so thanks for coming to the this edition of the. Kamaili Award, and uh, I hope to see you at the next edition. So thank you, everyone. Questions now? Uh, hey, Daniel. Uh, yep. Thank you for the presentation uh, and the work you're doing on the language backends. Uh, one of the problems, uh, well, not, not really problems, but a uh, little bit of uh, design issue with those fix-ups uh, functions uh, is that when I'm trying to call uh, some uh, Camellio function, routing function, basically, in uh, 
Camellio module from Python code, uh, I basically get in the array, well, string that is allocated uh, by the Python inter interpreter. Uh, and the fix-up uh, the fix up interface assumes uh, that uh, parameter that you pass is uh, actually allocated by the Camellio itself. Yeah, so it tries to free it, uh, and uh, uh, you either need to double copy and pass, uh, you know, allocate yeah. a new one and pass it on. Uh, I'm not sure if it's fixed. Yeah, no, this is fixed now with the Kemi interface because, okay, where is that function? Here. So practically, yeah, in the past, you're executing this from Lua. With Kemi, you execute this, which takes uh, the string value as it is from Python is no longer doing the fix up. Oh, okay. So that was the reason for the Kemi and we need to do this work is like, get rid of this fix up or keep it only for Camailio config file and then execute directly one that expects the pure string value or pure integer, not with Camailio variables. Okay, cool. So, so, so yeah. So nice. we solved that because that was indeed the, the, the issue. And of course, now instead of having a request route, you have a function in Lua Python that is executed for each request. All the sub routes are function names that you choose now. Actually, you choose also the route block name in Camilo config file, but now it's just a function. You can pass more parameters. So it is no longer like there are no parameters to these routing blocks. Now it's just. There are actually two main uh, route blocks will be uh, request route and on reply or reply route from the core. And everything else, now it's a function, even the failure route. The failure route, when you call t on failure, you put the name of a function you choose in uh, Lua Python and then will be executed by the Camailio. Yeah, Hugh? Has the native language changed in version five? So Which one? The, the native description. There language. is no change to that. So if you had a 4.4 and you wanted to upgrade to five, you could probably use the same. Yeah, it's file. the same. So the native language stays there, but it was a, a balance between adding this like reload support to require a lot of refactoring. And besides that, people are asking for like double operation or you know, with different expression, do you support that and that, uh, data types, connectivity to, I don't know which SQL, no SQL servers. And you find there is useful, but you don't have anyone paying it for you and you are busy with other customers, you can't really just implement everything. And yeah, you can combine them even, the KSR, you can even use it with the inline execution option, so you can mix it. And I don't, so again, it's kind of this transformation. The native config file is the same. If you upgrade from 4.4 to 5.0, there is no uh, big difference with the native config file. This is something that it's hidden, is not affecting the, the config file so far. Okay, so then I think we can uh, wrap it up. Uh, if there are no other questions, we don't have a date for the next uh, year. We are more or less at the capacity of the uh, location here. Hopefully, uh, we'll have another great event. Probably you will be here or if we decide to find a, a bigger location, will be announced in time. But this, I think it's convenient, very good choices of hotels around, very nice sightseeing outside, people staying in the same room. We, of course, wait for your feedback whenever you feel that something was a bit uh, not properly done. I know this year a bit with the Wi-Fi, sorry for that, but uh, sometimes you can't, uh, anticipate this, they were supposed to have a larger uh, capacity with a new router, but it was discovered that it was not actually put in production yet, so it's why we got the second guest network and then devices switching from one another was not that uh, easy, but hopefully it was more interesting to watch here and still you could uh, check the email and whatever you had to work on, on it. James? 
you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us, to you, oh, ooh, I'm tripping over people now again. Uh, um, uh, to you and uh, and your team, uh, particularly Ramona. Thank you very much because without you, Daniel, none of this would happen. <laughs> <laughs>